if music be the fruit of love. Play on. Give me excess of it, that surfeiting the appetite may sicken and so die. Mm, that's straight again. It had a dying fall. came all my ear like the sweet sound of breeze upon a bank of violets, stealing and giving over. Enough, my more. It's not so sweet now as it was before. <laughs> Spirit of love. How quick and fresh art thou. That notwithstanding thy capacity receiveth as the sea, Nought enters there of what validity and pitch soever, but falls into abatement for low price, even in a minute. So full of shapes is fancy, that it alone is high fantastic. Will you go hunt, my lord? What's curious? The heart. <laughs> what so I do? The noblest that I have. When mine eyes did see Olivia first, methought she purged the air of pestilence. That instant was I turned into a heart. And my desires, like fell and cruel hounds, as since pursue me. How now, what news from her? So please, my lord, you might not be admitted. Oh. But from a handmaid, I return this answer. The element itself, till seven years' heat, shall not behold her face at ample view. But like a cloistress, she will veil at walk, and water once a day her chamber round with eye-offending brine. All this to season a brother's dead love, which she would keep fresh and lasting her sad remembrance. She that at the heart of that fine frame to pay this debt of love to a brother. How will she love when the rich golden shaft hath killed the flock of all affections else that live with her? When liver, brain, and heart, these sovereign thrones are all supplied and filled, her sweet perfections with one self king. Away before me to sweet beds of flowers. Love thoughts lie rich when canopy with bowers. What country friends is this? This is Illyria, lady. What should I do in Illyria? My brother, he is in Elysium. Perchance he's not drowned. It is perchance that you yourself are saved. And so perchance may he be. True, madam. And to comfort you with chance, assure yourself, after our ship did split, when you and that poor number saved with you, hung on our driving boat, I saw your brother, most provident in peril, bind himself, courage and hope, both teaching him the practice, to a strong mast that lived upon the sea, where like Orion on a dolphin's back, I saw him hold acquaintance with the waves, so long as I could see. For saying so, there's gold. Knows thou this country? Aye, madam. Well? Who governs here? A noble duke. In nature as in name. What is his name? Orsino. Orsino. I've heard my father name him. He was a bachelor then. And is so now. It was so very late. For but a month ago I went from hence, and then to his fresh in Myrna. 
that he did seek the love of fair Olivia. What's she? The daughter of a count who died some twelve months since, then leaving her in the protection of his son, her brother, who shortly also died. For whose dear sake, they say, she hath endured the sight and company of men. Oh, that I served that lady, and might not be delivered to the world, till I had made my own occasion mellow what my estate is. Not to a hard to compass, for she will admit no kind of suit. No, not the dukes. I pretty, and I'll pay thee bounteously. Conceal me what I am, with some disguise. I'll serve this duke. Thou shalt present me as an eunuch to him. It may be worth thy pains, for I can sing and speak to him in many sorts of music that will allow me very worthy service. And what else may hap, to time I will commit. Only shape thou thy silence to my wit. Be you his eunuch, and your mute I'll be. When my tongue blabs, then let mine eyes not see. I thank thee. If the Duke continue these favours toward you, Cesaria, you're like to be much advanced. If known you but three days, and already you're no stranger. Cesaria. On your attendance, my lord. Here. Stand you a while aloof. Cesaria. Thou knowest no less but all. I have unclasped to thee the book even of my secret soul. Therefore, good youth, address thy gate unto her. Be not denied access. Sure, my noble lord, if she be so abandoned to a sorrow as it is spoke, she never will admit me. Be clamorous. Leap all civil bounds rather than make unprofited return. And say, I do speak with her, my lord. What then? Oh, <laughs> then. Unfold the passion of my love. She will attend it better in thy youth than in a nuncio of more grave aspect. I think not so, my lord. Dear lad, believe it. For they shall yet belie thy happy years and say thou art a man. Diana's lip is not more smooth and rubies. Thy small pipe is as a maiden's or shrill sound. And all is semblative of woman's. Hmm. <laughs> Prosper well in this. And thou shalt live as freely as thy lord to call his fortunes thine. I'll do my best to woo your lady. And yet a baffled strife. Whoe'er I woo, myself would be his wife. means my niece to take the death of her brother thus. Oh, I'm sure care's an enemy to life. By my troth, Sir Toby, you must come in earlier at nights. You must confine yourself within the modest limits of order. Confine? I'll confine myself no finer than I am. These clothes are good enough to drink in. That drinking will undo you. I heard my lady talk of it yesterday. And of a foolish knight that you brought in one night here to be her wooer. <laughs> Sir Andrew Hague, you see. Aye, he. <laughs> he has 3,000 ducats a year. He's a fool and a prodigal. He plays of the vile to gamboys. And he speaks three or four languages word for word without book. And he's drunk nightly in your company. <sighs> Drinking helps to my niece, Olivia. <laughs> I'll drink to him, as long as there's a passage in my throat and drink in Illyria. What wench. Here comes Sir Andrew Wagg, you face. Ah, one, two, and one, two. Sir Toby Belch, how now, Sir Toby Belch? Sweet Sir Andrew. Miss you, fair shrew. And you too, sir. Of 
cost, Sir Andrew. A cost. What's that? My nicest chambermaid. Good mistress, a cost. I desire a better acquaintance. The name is Mary, sir. Good mistress Mary, a cost. You mistake, knight. The cost is from her. Border. We were a sailor. Well, my troth, I would not undertake her in this company. Is that the meaning of a cost? Fare you well, gentlemen. Oh, would you let part so, Sir Andrew? Wouldst thou might never draw sword again? When you part so, mistress, I would I might never draw sword again. <laughs> Fair lady, do you think you have fools in hand? Sir, I have not you by the hand. Marry, but you shall have, and here's my hand. Now, sir, I pray you take your hand to the bar and let it drink. Wherefore, sweetheart, what's your matter for? It's dry, sir. Oh, I think so. I'm not such an ass, but I can keep my hand dry. <laughs> well, what's your jest? A dry jest, sir. Yeah, are you full of them? Sir, I have them at my fingers' ends. Marry now, let go your hand. I am barren. Ah, oh, night. When did I see thee so put down? Methinks sometimes I have no more wit than a Christian or an ordinary man has. But I am a great eater of beef, and I believe that does harm to my wit. Uh, no question. I'll ride home tomorrow, Sir Toby. Pourquoi, my dear knight? What is pourquoi? Do or not do? Oh, I would I had bestowed that time and the tongues that I have in fencing, dancing, and bear baiting. Oh, had I but followed the arts. Hadst thou had an excellent head of hair? Why would that have mended my hair? Past question. Thou seest, it will not curl by nature. But becomes me well enough, does it not? Excellent. It hangs like flax on a distaff. My hope to see a housewife take thee between her legs and spin it off. Hey, <laughs> <laughs> I'll home hmm. tomorrow, Sir Toby. Your niece Olivia will not be seen, and if she be, it's four to one, she'll none of me. The Duke himself here woos her. She'll none of the Duke. I've heard herself swear it. Uh -huh. life in it, man. I'll stay a month longer. <laughs> oh, I'm a fellow with the strangest mind in the world. I delight in masks and revels, sometimes all together. What is thy excellence? In a galliard, knight. Faith, I can cut a caper, and I think I have the back trick simply as strong as any man in Illyria. <laughs> Wherefore are these things hid? Wherefore are these gifts a curtain before them? Why do you not go to church in a galliard and come home in a garando? My very walk should be a cheap. I would not so much as pass water, but in a sink of ice. Oh, <laughs> I did think by the excellent constitution of thy leg that it was formed under the star of a galliard. No, ah, it is strong, and it does indifferent well in a dun-coloured sock. <laughs> well, so we set about some revels. What should we do else? Let me see the caper. Higher.
God bless thee, lady. Take the fool away. Do you not hear, fellows? Take away the lady. Sir, I bade them take away you. But, Madonna, give me leave to prove you a fool. Can you do it? Oh, dexterously, good Madonna. Make your proof. Good Madonna, why mournst thou? Good fool, for my brother's death. Your brother's death? I think his soul is in hell, Madonna. I know his soul is in heaven, fool. The more fool, Madonna, to mourn for your brother's soul being in heaven. <laughs> Take away the fool, dear lord. What think you of this fool, Malvolio? Doth he not mend? Yes. And shall do, until the pangs of death shake you. I marvel your ladyship takes delight in such a barren rascal. I saw him put down the other day with an ordinary fool that has no more brains than a stone. <laughs> Look you now. He's out of his guard already unless you laugh or minister occasion to him. He is gagged. Oh, you are sick of self-love, Malvolio, and taste with a distempered appetite. To be generous, guiltless, and a free disposition is to take those things of a bird bolts that you deem cannon bullets. Madam, there is at the gate a young gentleman much desires to speak with you. From the Duke, is it? Oh, I know not, madam. It is a fair young man. Who of my people hold him in delay? Sir Toby, madam. Your uncle. Fetch him off, I pray you. Go you, Malvolio. If it be a suit from Orsino, I am sick or not at home, which you will to dismiss it. Uh. Oh, I'm an honor, half drunk. What is he at the gate, uncle? A gentleman. A gentleman. What gentleman? Oh, it is a gentleman here. Uh. Like all these pickle herrings. Hell <laughs> <laughs> now, now Scott. <laughs> Good, Sir Toby. <laughs> Uncle. <laughs> Uncle. How have you come so early by this lethargy? Lethargy? Ah, defy lethargy. <laughs> One at the gate. I marry. What is he? Oh, let him be the devil, and he will. I care not. <laughs> He's in the third degree of drink. He's drowned. Go look after him. Yon young fellow swears he will speak with you. I told him you were sick. He takes on him to understand so much, and therefore comes to speak with you. I told him you were asleep. He seems to have a foreknowledge of that too, and therefore comes to speak with you. What is to be said to him, lady? He's fortified against any denial. Tell him I shall not speak with him. Has been told so, and says he'll stand at your door till he speaks with you. What kind of man is he? Why, of uh, mankind. What manner of man? Of very ill manner. He'll speak with you, will you or no? Of what personage and years is he? Well, not yet old enough for a man, nor young enough for a boy, as a squash is before it is a peace card, or a codling when it is almost an apple. It is with him in standing water between boy and man. He's very well favoured and speaks very shrewishly. One would think his mother's milk was scarce out of let him approach. Let down the veil. We'll once more hear Orsino's embassy. <laughs> the Honourable Lady of the House. Which is she? Speak to me. I will answer for her. Your will? Most radiant. Exquisite and unmatchable beauty. I pray you tell me if this be the lady of the house, for I never saw her. I would be loath to cast away my speech. 
Whence came you, sir? I can say little more than I have studied, and that question's out of my part. But good gentle one, give me modest assurance, if you be the lady of the house, that I may proceed in my speech. Are you a comedian? No. My profound heart. And yet, by the very fangs of malice, I swear I am not that I play. Are you the lady of the house? If I do not usurp myself, I am. I will on with my speech in your praise, and then show you the heart of my message. Come to what is important in it. I forgive you the praise. Alas, I took great pains to study it, and it is poetical. I pray you keep it in. Will you hoist sail, sir? Here lies your way. No, good swabber. I'm too hull here a little longer. Sure, you have some hideous matter to deliver when the courtesy of it is so fearful. Speak your office. It alone concerns your ear. I bring no overture of war, no taxation of homage. I hold the olive in my hand. My words are as full of peace as matter. Yet you began rudely. What are you? What would you? The rudeness that hath appeared in me have I learned from my entertainment. What I am and what I would are as secret as maidenhead. To your ears, divinity, to any others, profanation. Huh? Give us the place alone. We will hear this divinity. Now, sir, what is your text? Most sweet lady, a comfortable doctrine, and much may be said for it. Where lies your text? In Orsino's bosom. In his bosom? <laughs> In what chapter of his bosom? In the first, of his heart. Oh, I have read it. It is heresy. Have you no more to say? Good madam. Let me see your face. Have you any commission from your lord to negotiate with my face? You are now out of your text. But you may draw the curtain, and we will show you the picture. Oh. Look you, sir. Such a one I was is present. Is not well done? Excellently done. If God did all. Tis in grain, sir, to endure wind and weather. Tis beauty truly blent, whose red and white nature's own sweet and cunning hand laid on. Lady, you are the cruelest she alive, if you would lead these graces to the grave and leave the world no copy. Oh, I will not be so hard-hearted. I will give out diverse schedules of my beauty. It shall be inventoried as item, two lips in different red, two brown eyes with lids to them, one neck, one chin, and so forth. Were you sent hither to praise me? I see what you are. You are too proud. But if you were the devil, you are fair. My lord and master loves you. How does he love me? With adorations, with fertile tears, with groans that thunder love, with sighs of fire. Your lord does know my mind. I cannot love him. He might have took his answer long ago. If I did love you in my master's flame, with such a suffering, such a deadly life, in your denial I would find no sense. I would not understand it. Why? What would you? Make me a willow cabin at your gate, and call upon my soul within the house. Write loyal cantons of contentment love, and sing them loud, even in the dead of night. Hallow your name to the reverberate hills, and make the babbling gossip of the air cry out. Olivia, oh, you should not rest between the elements of air and earth. But you should pity me. Oh, you might do much. What is your parentage? Uh, above my fortunes, yet my state is well. I am a gentleman. 
Get you to your lord. I cannot love him. Let him sin no more. Unless, perchance, you come to me again to tell me how he takes it. Very well. Thank you for your pains. Take this for me. Uh, lady, keep your gift. My master, not myself, lacks recompense. Love, make his heart a flint that you show love. And let your fervor, like my master's, be placed in content. Farewell, Herr Cruelty. What is your parentage? Above my fortunes, but my state is well. I am a gentleman. I'll be sworn thou art. Thy tongue, my face, limbs, actions, and spirit do give thee fivefold blazing. Too far soft. Oh, now, even so quickly may one catch the plague. Methinks I feel this youth's perfections with an invisible and subtle stealth to creep in at mine eyes. Let it be. What ho, Malvolio? Uh, here, madam, uh, at your service. Run after that same peevish messenger, Orsino's man. He left this ring behind him, would I or not. Tell him I'll none of it. Desire him not to flatter with his lord, nor hold him up with hopes. I'm not for him. If that the youth would come this way tomorrow, I'll give him reasons for it. Madam, I will. Malvolio. Were not you here now with the Countess Olivia? Even now, sir, on a moderate pace, I have since arrived with hither. She returns this ring to you, sir. You might have saved me my pains to have taken it away yourself. She adds, moreover, that you should put your lord in a desperate assurance she will have none of him. Oh, and one thing more, are you never so hard to come again in his affairs? And this be to report your lords, taking of this, receive it so. She took the ring of me. I'll none of it. Come, sir, you peevishly threw it to her. And her will is it should be so returned. If it be worth stooping for, there it lies in your eye. If not, be it his that finds it. I left my ring of her. What means this lady? Fortune forbid my outside have not charmed her. She made good view of me indeed, so much that as methought her eyes had lost her tongue, for she did speak in starts distractedly. She loves me sure. The cunning of her passion invites me in this churlish messenger. None of my lords are in way. He sent her none. I am the man. If it be so, as tears, poor lady, she would better love a dream. My stars shine darkly over me. My name is Sebastian. My father was Sebastian of Messaline. He left behind him myself and a sister. Both born in an hour. Had the heavens been pleased, would we had so ended? But you, sir, altered that. For some hour before you took me from the breach of the sea, was my sister drowned. That's the day. A lady, though it was said she much resembled me, was yet by many accounted beautiful. She bore a mind that envy could not but call fair. She's drowned already in salt water, though I seem to drown her remembrance again with more. Pardon me, sir, your bad entertainment. Ah, good Antonio. Forgive me your trouble. Let me be your servant. Desire it not. Fare you well at once.
That bosom's full of kindness. I'm bound for the Count Alcino's court. There you will. Sir Andrew? Hmm? Not to be a bed after midnight. It's to be up early, thou knows. Nay, by my trust, I know not. But I know to be up late is to be up late. False conclusion. I hide it as an unfilled can. Does not our lives consist of the four elements? Right. So they say. But I think it rather consists of eating and drinking. They are a scholar. Let us therefore eat and drink. Marry him, I say. A stupid lie. Oh, here comes a fool if Come now, my heart. Welcome, ass. <laughs> Let's have a song. Mm. By my troth, I had rather than 40 shillings I had so sweet a breath to sing as the fool had. In sooth, thou wast in very gracious fooling last night <laughs> when thou spoke to big regrometers. <laughs> and the way. <laughs> I sent thee sixpence for thy sweetheart. Hadst it? I did in Pentecost I gratility. Yeah. Oh, oh, no. <laughs> oh, excellent. Ah, oh, this is the best fooling when all is done. Now a song. Come on. Here is sixpence for you. Now let's have a song. There's a testrel in me too. If one night give a testrel, well, the other night always song, should. Or a song good life. I love soul. I love soul. I, I care not for good life. Fluous voice, as I am true knight, a contagious breath, very sweet and contagious effect. Do you hear, Father Mars? What else is in contagion? 
Да. Шау Уэй. Make the welcome dance indeed. Shall we rouse the night owl in a cat that will draw three souls out of one weaver? Shall I do that? And you love me? Let's do it! <laughs> I'm dog in a cat. <laughs> Most certain. Hey. Let our cats be their knave. Uh, uh. Hold thy peace, thou knave knight. Mm. I shall be constrained in it to call thee knave knight. This is not the first time I've constrained one to call me knave. Mm. Begin, fool. It begins, hold thy peace. Oh, I shall never begin if I hold my peace. Oh, oh, oh good. Come, begin. Hold thy peace and a prithee, hold thy peace. Thou knave, thou knave. Hold thy peace, thou knave. Hold thy peace, thou knave, thou knave. Hold thy peace and a prithee, hold thy peace. and bid him turn you out of doors. Never trust me. My land is a Chinaman. We are politicians. And Malvalia. Malvalia! Bedlam! <laughs> and three merry men be we. Oi! Oi! <laughs> And the like consanguineous? Am I not of her blood? Billy Valley Lane. And well, oh, yes. a man in Babylon. Oh, lady, oh, lady. Assure me the night's inadmirable fooling. Aye, mm. he does well if he be disposed. So do I too. He does it with a better grace. I do it more natural. Mm -hmm. On the twelfth day of December, my true love sent to me. Twelve, five, five, eight, eleven, <laughs> ten, white is dancing, nine, drumming, drumming, eight, something or other, seven, swans swimming, six, geese are geese. My masters, are you mad? Or what are you? Have you not wit, manners, or honesty but to gabble like tinkers at this time of night? Would you make an alehouse of my lady's house that you squeak out your cosier catches without any mitigation or remorse of voice? Is there no respect for place, persons, or time in you? We did keep time, sir. In our capture? Make up. <laughs> <laughs> Sir Toby, I must be round with you. My lady bade me tell you that though she harbors you as a kinsman, she has nothing allied to your disorders. If you can separate yourself and your misdemeanors, you are welcome to this house. If not, and it would please you to take leave of her, she is very willing to bid you farewell. 
Farewell, dear heart, since I must needs be gone. Nay, good sir. Tom. eyes do show, his days are almost uh, done. Is it even but so? I will never <laughs> die. Sir Toby, there you <laughs> lie. <laughs> la, 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 This is much better to you. <laughs> la, 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 shall I bid him go? <laughs> la, 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 what? And uh, if you do. Shall I bid him go and spare not? <laughs> oh, no, 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 you dare not. <laughs> Out of turn, sir. The last. Not any more than a steel. Dost thou think that if thou art virtuous, there shall be no more cakes and ale? Go, sir, rub your chain with crumbs. A stoop of wine, Maria. Mistress Mary, if you prize my lady's favourite anything more than content, you will not give means to this uncivil ruler. She'll know of it by this hand. So shake your ears. <laughs> It's uh -huh. so a good deed to challenge him the field and then to break promise with him and so make a fool of him. Do it, Mike. I'll write me a challenge. So Toby, be patient for tonight. Uh -huh. Since the youth of the Dukes was today with my lady, she's much out of quiet. Monsieur Malvolio, let me alone with you. Oh, possesses. Possesses. Tell us something of him. Mary, so sometimes he's a kind of Puritan. Oh, if I thought that, I'd beat him like a dog. What? For being a Puritan? Mm. My exquisite reason, my dear knight. Well, I have no exquisite reason for it, but I've reason good enough. The devil a Puritan that he is. It is his grounds of faith that all that look on him love him. Mm. And on that vice in him, in my revenge, find notable cause to work. What wilt thou do? I will drop in his way some obscure epistles of blood. <laughs> wherein, by the colour of his hair, the shape of his legs, uh -huh. the expression of his eye, he shall find himself most feelingly personated. I'm with you. I can write very like my lady, your niece. Excellent. I smell a device. Mm. I have it in my nose, too. <laughs> he will think by the letters that they'll drop in his path that they come from my niece, and she's in love with him. <laughs> my purpose is indeed a horse of that colour. Hey, uh, and your horse now would make him an ass. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, it will be admirable. Sport royal, I warrant you. I will plant you too, and let the tool make a third, and I'll volume to find the letter. For this night to bed and dream on you. Come on, my Amazonian princess. And for me, she's a good wench. She is a beagle, true bread, and one that adores me. Uh, what are they? I was adored once, too. Let's to bed, Martin. Thou hadst need send for more money. And I cannot recover your niece. I'm a foul way out. Ah, oh, send for the money, knight. If thou hast her not in the end, call me. And I do not. Never trust me. Take it how you will.
I'll go and drink some sack. There's no light when I got on bed. Come on. Come on. <laughs> Give me some music. Now, good morrow, friends. Now, good Cesario. A piece of song, that old and antique song we heard last night. I thought it did relieve my passion much. Come, but one verse. He is not here, so please your lordship that you'd sing it. Who was it? Festi the jester, my lord. He's about the house. Seek him out. Play the tune a while. And hear the boy. Whatever thou shalt love, the sweet pangs of it remember me. For such as I am all true lovers are, unstayed and skittish in all motions else, save in the constant image of the creature that is beloved. <laughs> How dost thou like this tune? It gives the very echo to the seat where love is throned. To speak, master. My life it was. Younger thou art, thine eye had stayed upon some favour that it loves. Hath it not, boy? A little, by your favour. What kind of woman is it? Of your complexion. She's not worth you, then. What years, if I. About your ears, my lord. <laughs> Too old by him. <laughs> Let still the woman take an elder than herself. So wears she to him, so sways she level in her husband's heart. A boy, however, we do praise ourselves. Our fancies are more giddy and unfurled, more longing, wavering, sooner lost and warm than women's are. I think it will, my lord. Fellow, come. The song we had last night. I am. Mark it, Cesario. It's old and plain. The spinsters and the knitters in the sun and the free maids that weave their thread with bows to use to chant. Silly, silly. And dallies with the innocence of love, like the old age. Are you ready, sir? Aye, but he sing.
for thy pains. No pain, sir. I take pleasure in singing, sir. I'll pay thy pleasure, then. Surely, sir, and pleasure will be paid one time or another. Give me now leave to read thee. Now the melancholy God protect thee, for thy mind is a very opal. Farewell. Let all the rest give place. Once more, Cesario, get thee to yon same sovereign cruelty. Tell her my love, more noble than the world, prizes not quantity of dirty lands. The parts that fortune hath bestowed upon her, tell her I hold as giddily as fortune. It is that miracle and queen of gems that nature pranks her and attracts my soul. But if she cannot love you? I cannot be so answered. Oh, sir, but you must. Say that some lady, as perhaps there is, hath for your love as great a pang of heart as you have for Olivia. You cannot love her. You tell her so. Must not then she be answered? There is no woman's sides can by the beating of so strong a passion as love doth give my heart. No woman's heart so big to hold so much they lack retention. Mine is all as hungry as the sea and can digest as much. Make no compare between that love a woman can bear me and that I owe Olivia. Why? But I know. What does thou know? Too well what love women to men may owe. In faith, they are as true of heart as we. My father had a daughter loved a man. As it might be, were I a woman, I should your lordship. And what's her history? A blank, my lord. She never told her love, but let concealment, like a worm in the bud, feed on her damask cheek. She pined in thought, and with a green and yellow melancholy she sat, like patience on a monument, smiling at grief. Was not this love, indeed? We men may say more, swear more, but indeed our shows are more than will, for still we prove much in our vows, but little in our love. I, thy sister, of her love, my boy. I am all the daughters of my father's house. And all the brothers, too. And yet I know not. So shall I to this lady? Aye, that's the theme. To her in haste. Give her this jewel. Say my love can give no place. Buy no name. Be glad, Senor Fabian, to see a niggardly, rascally sheep by to come by some notable shame. I would exult, man. You know, he brought me out of favour with my lady. Oh. Oh. We will fool him black and blue, shall we not, Sir Andrew? And we do not. It is pity on our lives. All right. Well, here comes my little villain. Now, Valio's coming down this walk. He has been yonder in the sun, practicing behavior to his own shadow this half hour. <laughs> uh, Observe him for the love of mockery, for I know this letter will make a contemplative idiot of him. Close in the name of jesting. What? the trap that must be caught with tickling. Tis oh. but fortune. All is fortune. For I once told me my lady did affect me. And I've heard herself come thus near that should she fancy it would be one of my complexion. Besides, she uses me in more exalted respect than anyone else that follows her. What should I think on it? It is an overweening love. 
To be Count Malvolio. Oh, oh, pistol, pistol, please, please. Having been three months married to her, sitting in my state, calling my officers about me in my branched velvet gown, having come from a day bed, I left Olivia sleeping. Time, oh, and And then to have the humor of state, to ask for my kinsman, Toby. Bollocks and shackles! The seven of my people make out with him. I frown the while. Oh, perchance wind up my watch. Or play with my, um... Some which do. Sir Toby approaches. Curtsies. There to me. Will this fellow live? I extend my hand to him thus, quenching my familiar smile with an austere regard of control. Does not Toby take you a blow of the lips, then? Saying, Cousin Toby, my uh, fortunes, having cast me on your niece, uh, give me this prerogative of speech. What? What? You must amend your drunkenness. waste the treasure of your time with a foolish knight. That's me, I warrant you. One, Sir Andrew. In your two's eyes, many do call me Sir Andrew. What employment have we here? Oh, please, in the spirit of humor, intimate reading aloud to him. By my life, it is my lady's hand. These be a very C's, her U's and a T's. And thus makes she her great peas. It is in contempt to question her hand. The seas are used in her teas. Why that? To the unknown beloved, this and my good wishes. Oh, the very phrases. By your leave, wax. Soft. And the impression her crease with which she uses to seal. It is, my lady. Oh, to whom should this be? Miss wins him. Jove knows I love, but who? Lips do not move. No man must know. No man must know. What follows? Oh, the number's altered. No man must know. <gasps> if this should be thee, Malvolio. Mary, hang thee, Brock. And may command where I adore, but silence like a Lucrece knight. With bloodless strokes, my heart doth gore. M O A I, the sway my life. Excellent wench, say I. M O A I, the sway my life. Nay, but first let me see, let me see, let me see. I may command where I adore. <gasps> Why she may command me? I serve her. She is my lady. Why there is no obstruction in this? <gasps> and to the end, what should the alphabetical position pretend? <gasps> if I could make that resemble something in me, softly. M O A. I, oh, I make up that M. Malvolio, M, M, M. Why it begins my name, M, M, M. Oh, but then there's no consonancy in the sequel. A should follow, but O does. Then I comes behind. Ah, uh, if you had an eye behind you, you might see more detractions at your heels than fortunes before you. <laughs> That's a good one. O, A, I. The simulation is not as the former. And yet, crush this little. It would bow to me, for every one of these letters is in my name. M O A I. Mo Mo I Mo Mo I Ma Mo. Ah. Oh, softly, here follows prose. If this falls into thy hand, revolve. In my stars, I am above thee. But be not afraid of greatness. Some are born great. Some achieve greatness, and some have greatness thrust upon them. Their fates open their hands, that thy blood and spirit embrace them, and to inure thyself to what thou art like to be, cast thy humble slough and appear fresh, be opposite with a kinsman, 
surly with servants, let thy tongue tang with the arguments of state. And put thyself into the twit of singularity. She thus advises thee that sighs for thee. Remember who commended thy yellow stockings and wish to see thee ever cross guarded. I say, remember. Go to, thou art made if thou desirest to be so. If not, let me see thee a steward still, the fellow of servants not worthy to touch fortune's fingers. For well, she that would alter services to thee. Unhappy. Daylight and champion discover not war. This is open. I will be proud. I will read politic orders. I will baffle Sir Toby, I will wash up Ross acquaintance, I will be point device the very man. I do not now fool myself to let imagination jade me, for every reason excites to this. That my lady loves me. She did commend my yellow stockings of late. She did praise my legs for being cross-guarded. And in this, she manifests herself to my love, and with a kind of injunction bribes me to these habits of a liking. I take my stars, I am happy. Strange, stout, in yellow stockings and cross guarded him with the swiftness of putting on. Jove and my stars be praised. Here is yet postscript. Thou canst not choose but know who I am. If thou entertainest my love, let it appear in thy smiling. I smiled become me well, therefore in my presence still smile, dearest, my sweet, I prithee. O Jove, I thank thee, I will smile, I will do everything thou wilt have me. <laughs> Wench for this device. <laughs> so could I too. And ask no other dowry with her, but just such another jest. <laughs> no, I know. Here comes my noble girl, Joe. Oh, set my foot on my neck. You ain't for mine either. Shall I play my freedom a tray trip and become thy bond slave? If I, or I either. Oh, thou hast put him in such a dream that when the image of it leaves him, he must surely run mad. Nay, but say true. Does it work upon him? <laughs> like aqua vitae with a midwife. <laughs> if you will then see the fruits of the sport, mark his first approach to my lady. Mm -hmm. He will come to her in yellow stockings. <laughs> a colour she abhors. <laughs> And cross guarded a fashion she detests. <laughs> and he will smile upon her, which would not be so unsuitable to her disposition, being addicted to a melancholy as she is, <laughs> that it cannot but turn him into a notable contemporary. <laughs> if you will see it, then follow me. Oh, to the very gates of time, my most. Oh! Save thy friend and thy music. Dost thou live by thy instruments? No, sir, I live by the church. Are thou churchman? No, sir, I do live by the church. For I do live at my house, and my house doth stand by the church. <laughs> but not thou the Lady Olivia's fool. No, indeed, sir. Lady Olivia hath no folly. She will keep no fool, sir, till she be married. For well, fools are as like husbands as pilchards out of herrings. Her husband's the beaker. <laughs> Here's expenses for thee. Now, Jove, in his next commodity of hair, send thee a beard. By my troth, I'll tell thee. I'm almost sick for one. But I would not have it grow on my chin. My lady with him? Would not a pair of these have bread, sir? I understand you, sir. He's well begged. The lady is with him, sir. I will constitute them when you come. 
So you are, what you would, are out of my will. I have you, gentlemen. And you, sir? Dieu vous garde, monsieur. Et vous aussi, votre serviteur. Well, I hope so you are, and I am yours. Will you encounter the house? My niece is desirous you should enter if your trade be to her. I will answer you with gate and entrance, but be prevented. Most excellent, accomplished lady, the heavens rain odors on you. That youth's a rare courtier, rain odors. Well. My matter hath no voice, lady, but to your own most pregnant and vouchsafed ear. Odors, pregnant and vouchsafed? I'll get them all three already. Let the garden door be shut and leave me to my hearing. Give me your hand, sir. My duty, madam, and most humble service. What is your name? Cesario. Is your servant's name, fair princess? My servant, sir. Your servant to the Count Orsino lives. I am here to whet your gentle thoughts on his behalf. By your leave, I pray you, I bid you never speak again of him. Would you undertake another suit? I had rather hear you to solicit that. The music from the spheres. Dear lady, give me leave. Beseech you. I did send. After the last enchantment you did here, the ring in chase of you. So did I abuse myself, my servant, and I fear me, you. What you think? Have you not set mine honor at the stake and baited it with all the unmuscled thoughts that Turner's heart can think? To one of your receiving enough is shown. Cypress, not a bosom, hides my heart. So let me hear you speak. I pity you. That's a degree to love. No, not a cries. That is a vulgar proof that very often we pity enemies. Well then, thinks it is time to smile again. In the world, how apt the poor are to be proud. One should be a prey, how much the better to fall before the lion than the wolf. The clock upbraids me with the waste of time. Not afraid, good youth. I shall not have you. Yet when wit and youth has come to harvest, the wife is like to reap the proper man. There lies your way to your west. Then, west would have grace and good disposition attend your ladyship. You nothing, madam, to my lord by me? Stay! I prithee, tell me what you think of me. That you do think you are not what you are. I think so. I think the same of you. <laughs> then think you right. I am not what I am. Oh, I would you were as I would have you be. Would it be better, madam, than I am? I wish it might. For now I am your fool. A deal of scorn looks beautiful in the contempt and anger of his lip. A murderous guilt shows not itself more soon than love that would seem hid. Love's night is known. Cesario, by all the roses of the spring, by maidhood, honor, truth, and everything, I do love thee so that more of all my pride, no wit, no reason can my passion hide. Do not extort thy reason from this clause, for that I woo thou therefore has no cause. But rather reason thus with reason fetter. Love sought is good, but given unsought is better. And by innocence I swear and by my youth, I have one heart, one bosom, and one truth, and that no woman has nor never none shall mistress be of it save I alone. And so adieu, good madam. Never more will I my master's tears to you deplore. Yet come again, for thou perhaps may smell that heart which now mourns to like his love. 
shall not stay a jot longer. Thy reason, dear Venom. You must give your reason. You must needs yield your reason, Sir Andrew. Mary, I saw your niece do more favours to the Duke's serving man than ever she bestowed upon me. I saw it in the garden. Did she see thee the while, old boy? Tell me that. As plain as I see you now. Oh, this was a great <laughs> argument of love in her towards you. God. Right, will you make an ass of me? She did show favour to the youth in your sight only to exasperate you, to put fire in your heart and brimstone in your liver. You should then have accosted her. And with some of your excellent jests, you should have banged the youth into dumbness. You are now sunk, in my lady's opinion, unless you do redeem it by some laudable attempt, either of valour or policy. And a bit anyway, it must be with valour for policy, I hope. Why then, challenge me the Count's youth to fight with him. Hurt him in eleven places. My niece shall hear of it. Sure, thy sir. There is no way but this, Sir Andrew. Will either of you bear me a challenge to him? No. Write it in a martial hand. Right. Taunt him with the license of ink. And as many lies as will lie in your sheet of paper. Where shall I find you? We'll call thee. It's a dear cover to you, Sir Toby. <laughs> I have been dear to him, lad. Some two thousand ducats or so. <laughs> ah, we shall have a rare letter from him. But we shall not deliver it. Never trust me then. And by all means, stir on the youth to an answer. Oh, I think oxen and wain ropes cannot hail them together. For Andrew, if you were opened up and you found as much blood in his liver as would clog the foot of a flea, I'll eat the rest of the anatomy. <laughs> What's to do? So we go see the relics of this town. Tomorrow, sir. Best first go see your lodgings. I'm not weary. And it's long tonight. Would you pardon me? I do not without danger walk these streets. Once in a sea fight against Orsino's galleys, I did some service. But like you slew a great number of his people? The offence is not of such a bloody nature. But if I be lapsed in this place, I shall pay dear. Will not then walk too open? Hold, sir, here's my purse. The south suburbs of the Elephant is best to lodge. There shall you have me. Why are your purse? Well, happily your eyes shall light upon some toy you have desired to purchase. <laughs> And your store, I think, is not for idle markets, sir. I'll be your purse bearer and leave you for an hour. To the elephant. I do remember. Where's Malvolio? He is sound and civil and suits well for a sudden with my fortunes. Where is Malvolio? He's coming, madam, but in very strange manner. He's sure possessed, madam. Why? What's the matter? Does he read him? No, madam. He does nothing but smile. Your ladyship were best to have some guard about you if you come. For sure the man is tainted in his wits. Go call him hither. How oh, now, Malvolio? upon a sad occasion. Sad, lady? I could be sad. This does cause some obstruction in the blood, this cross gartering. But what of that? If it pleases the eye of one, it is with me as the very true sonnet is. Please one, please all. Boo, 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 boo. What is the matter with thee? Not black in the mind, though yellow in the legs. If it come to his hands and command should be executed, I think we do know the sweet Roman hand. Wilt thou go to bed, Malvolio? To bed? Oh, my sweetheart, and I'll come to thee. God comfort thee, why dost thou smile so? How do you, Malvolio? Why appear you with this ridiculous boldness before my lady? Be not afraid of greatness. Oh, 
to a spell writ. What means thou by that, my boy? Some are born great, huh? some achieve greatness. What says thou? And some have greatness thrust. Now, open my story! Madam, the young gentleman from the Count Orsino's has returned. I could hardly entreat him back. He entreats your ladyship's. I'll come to him. Good Mariah, let this fellow be looked. Where is my Uncle Toby? Let some of my people have a special care of him. I would not have him miscarry for the half of my dowry. Oh. Oh. Do you come near me now? This concurs directly with a letter. She sends Sir Toby to me that I may appear stubborn to him. And when she went away now, let this fellow be looked to. Fellow. Not Malvolio or after my degree, but fellow. Oh, I, everything adheres together that no dram of a scruple, no scruple of a scruple, no obstacle, no incredulous or unsafe circumstance. What can be said? Nothing that can be can come between me and the full prospects of my hopes. <laughs> How is it with you, sir? How is it with you, ma'am? Go on. I discard you. Oh, let me enjoy my private. Go off. Pray God he be not bewitched. Carry his piss water to the wise woman. <laughs> yeah, that's their chance. Go. Hang yourselves all. You are idle, shallow things. I am not of your element. You shall know more hereafter. <laughs> <laughs> it's impossible. It's just been played upon a stage now. I could condemn it as an improbable fiction. Nay, hey, pursue him now, lest the device take air and taint. Well, I wish I'll make him mad indeed. Well, the house will be the quieter. Come. We'll have him in a dark room and bed. For my niece is already in the belief that he's mad. We may carry it thus far for our pleasure and his penance to our very pastime. Lad out of breath. Prompt us to have mercy upon him. See, see. Here's the challenge. Read it. I warrant there's vinegar and pepper in it. Is it so saucy? Ah, tis. Warrant him. Do but read. Youth. Whatsoever thou art, thou art but a scurvy fella. Good. Thou comes to the Lady Olivia, and in my sight she uses thee kindly, but thou liest in thy throat. <laughs> that is not the matter I challenge thee for. <laughs> I will waylay thee going home, where if it be thy chance to kill me, thou kills me. Yup. Like a rogue and a villain. Good. Very well. And God have mercy upon one of our souls. Thy friend, my sworn enemy, Andrew Aguetrick, well, I will give it to him. He is now in some commerce with my lady and will by and by depart. Go, Sir Andrew. Scout me for him at the corner of the garden like a bum bailey. So soon as ever thou seest him, draw. Oh, as that draws, swear horror. Terrible oath with a swaggering accent, sharply twanged off, gives manhood more reprobation than ever proof itself could have heard. Away. Nay, let me alone for swearing. I deliver his letter to the youth, but he will find it comes from a clodpole. 
<laughs> but I will deliver the challenge by word of mouth. <laughs> I have said too much unto a heart of stone. Here, wear this jewel for me. It's my picture. Refuse it not, if I've no tongue to vex you. And I beseech you, come again tomorrow. What shall you ask me that I'll deny that I'll save me from asking again? Nothing but this, your true love for my master. How is mine honor now given that which I have given to you? I will quit you. Come again tomorrow. Are they well? Me like they might bear my soul to hell. God save thee. And you, sir? Let the prince thou hast be take thee to it. Thy interceptor. Bloody as the hunter attends thee at the garden end. You mistake, sir. I'm sure no man hath any quarrel to me. Oh, you'll find it otherwise, sir, I assure you. I pray you, sir, what is it? Here's a knight. He's a very devil in private rule. Songs from bodies hath he divorced. I will return again into the house and desire some conduct of the lady. I am no fighter. I have heard of some kind of men that put quarrels purposely on others to taste their valour. But like this is a man of that quirk. Sir, no, no, no. His indignation derives itself out of a very competent injury. And back you shall not to the house unless you undertake that with me, which with as much safety you might answer him. Therefore, on. Meddle your mouth, that's certain. This is as uncivil as strange. I beseech you do me this courteous office, as to know of the night what my offence to him is. It is something of my negligence, nothing of my purpose. I will do so. He's a very devil. I am not seeing such a virago. I say, he has been a fencer to the shah. Pox on it, I'll not meddle with you. You will not now be pacified. Fabian can scarce hold him yonder. Plague on it. I thought he'd been so valiant and cunning in fence, I'd have seen him damned there. I'd have challenged him. Let him let the matter slip, and I'll give him my horse, Great Capulet. I'll make the motion. Uh, stand here. Make a good show on it. There's no remedy, sir. He will fight with you for his oath's sake. Therefore, draw for the supportance of his vow. He protests he will not hurt you. Pray God defend me. A little thing would make me tell them how much I lack of a man. Now the gentleman will, for his honour's sake, have one bout with you. But he has promised me, as he is a gentleman and a soldier, it will not hurt you. Come on, do it. Pray God he keep his oath. I do assure you, sir, it is against my will. I take the fault on me. If you offend him, I fought him to fight.
You, sir? What are you? One, sir, who for his love dares yet do more than you have heard him brag to you, he will. Aye, then. If you be an undertaker, I am for you. Good, sir, Toby Hall. Here come the officers. I'll be with you anon. This is the man. Do thy office. Antonio, I arrest thee at the suit of Count Orsino. You do mistake me, sir? No, sir, not sure. I know your favour well. Take him away. This comes with seeking you. But there's no remedy. What will you do now? My necessity makes me to ask you for my purse. Come, sir, away. I must entreat of you some of that money. What money, sir? For the fair kindness you have showed me here, and part being prompted by your present trouble. I'll lend you something. My having is not much. It's half my coffer. Will you deny me now? It's possible my deserts to you can lack persuasion. I know of none, nor know I you by voice or any feature. Oh, heavens themselves. Come, sir. Let me speak a little. This youth that you see here, I snatched one half out of the jaws of death. And to his image, which we thought did promise most venerable worth, did I devotion. Oh, how vile an idol is this God. Oh, hast Sebastian done good feature shame? Come on, sir. Lead me on. Methinks his words do from such passion fly, but he believes himself. So do not I. Prove true imagination. Or prove true that I, dear brother, be now tamed for you. He named Sebastian. I, my brother, know yet living in my glass. Even such and so in favor was my brother, and he went, even in this color, fashion, ornament, for him I imitate. Oh, if it prove, tempest are kind and salt waves fresh in love. A very dishonest paltry boy, and more a coward than a hare. Well, his dishonesty appears in leaving his friend here and denying him in his necessity. As for his cowardship, you just ask Fabian. Oh, a coward. A most devout coward. Religious in it. Slid. I'll after him again and beat him. Do. Cuff him soundly. Never draw my sword. And I do not. Right. No, I do not know you. No, your name is not Master Cesario. Oh, this is not my nose, no? I prithee bent thy folly somewhere else, thou knowest not me. Vent my folly? Tell me, what shall I vent to my lady? Shall I vent to him? A prithee. Depart from me. Now, sir. And I met you again. There's for you. Where's for thee? I'm there! I'm there! Oh, are all the people mad? I'm sure. Oh, I'll throw you all the house. This will I tell my lady straight. Come on, sir. Oh, no, let him alone. I'll go to work another way with him. I'll have an action of battery against him if there be any law in Illyria. Oh, I struck him first, yet it's no matter for that. Let go of the hand. Sir, I will not. My word, you are well placed. I will be free. Oh. What was done out? <laughs> oh, ye. Thou dress tempt me further. Draw thy sword. Nay, then. I must have an ounce or two of this malapert blood from you. Hold, Toby! On my life, I charge thee, hold! Madam! Will you ever thus? Ungracious wretch. Fit for the mountains and the barbarous caves where manners now are preached. Out of my sight. Be not offended, dear Cesario. Won't be. Be gone. Pretty gentle friend, let thy fair wisdom, not thy passion, sway in this uncivil and unjust extent against thy peace. Go with me to my house. Hear thou there how many fruitless pranks this ruffian hath botched up. But thou thereby may smile at this. I shall not choose but go. Do not deny. 
It's really so for me. Started one poor heart of mine. For me. What relish is in this? Me come, big baby. It's not you want to buy me. Madam, I will. Oh! Say so, and so be. In this prison. Who calls there? Sir Toby and Mariah. Come to visit Malvolio the lunatic. <laughs> Sir Toby. Sir Toby. Good Sir Toby. Go to my lady. Malvolio. Talk us out nothing but of ladies. They've laid me here in hideous darkness. Yard had bay windows as lustrous and transparent as ebony. It is as dark as hell, Sir Toby. I say there never was a man thus wronged. I am no more mad than you are. Sir Toby! Sir Toby! Silly fool. Sir Toby! Oh, you are well rid of this paper. Now so far in offence with my niece, I cannot with any safety pursue our sport to the upshot. Come by and by to our chamber. Thy peace and a privy hall. Thy peace. Thou may. Thou may. Who called? Good fool, help me. As I am a gentleman, I will live to be thankful to it for it. Master Malvolia. Aye, good fool. Alas, sir, how fell you beside your father this? Fool, there never was a man so notoriously abused. I'm as well in my wits as thou art. But as well? Then you are mad indeed, sir. Oh, good fool. Help me to some light, some ink, and some paper, and convey what I will set down to my lady. I will help you to it. But tell me this. Are you not mad in truth? Believe me, I am not. I tell thee true. Nay, I'll never believe a madman till I see his brains. I will fetch you light and paper and ink. Oh, good fool. I requite it in the highest degree. Oh, pretty. Be gone. I am gone, sir. <laughs> This is the air. That the glorious sun. This pearl she gave me, I do feel and see. And though tis wonder that enwraps me thus, it is not madness. And where's Antonio then? I could not find him at the elephant. Yet there he was. And there he left a note that he did range the town to seek me out. There's something in it that is deceivable. Blame not this haste of mine. If you mean well, then go with me, and with this holy man, plight me the full assurance of your faith. My most jealous and too doubtful soul may live at peace. What do you say? I'll go with you. And having sworn truth, never will be true. Belong you to the Lady Olivia, friend. Aye, sir, I am part of her trappings. I know thee well. There's gold. Would you tell your lady I am here? I said it would be double dealing, sir. I wish you could make it another. <laughs> you give me ill counsel. Put your grace in your pocket, sir, for this once, and let your flesh and blood obey. Well, there would be so much a sinner to be a double dealer. There's another. The old saying is the third pays for all. You can fool no more money out of me at this throat. If you will bring your lady here. Waken me about it. But you're bound to take a nap. I'll awaken him on. Here comes the man, sir, that did rescue me. The face of his do I remember well. When I saw it last, it was besmeared as black as Vulcan in the smoke of war. He did me kindness, sir. Drew on my side. But in conclusion, put strange speech upon me. I know not what was, but distraction. 
notable pirate, thou saltwater thief. What foolish boldness has brought thee to their mercies, whom thou in terms so bloody and so dear has made thine enemies? A witchcraft in thee. That most ingrateful boy that by your side from the rude seas and raised and foamy mouth did I redeem. Rack past hope he was. His life I gave him and did there to add my love without retention or restraint, all his in dedication. How can this be? When came he to this town? Today, my lord. And for three months before, both day and night, did we keep company. Comes the countess. Now heaven walks on earth. But for thee, fellow, fellow, thy words are madness. Take him aside. What would, my lord, but that he may not have, wherein Olivia may seem serviceable? Gracious. Cesario, you do not keep promise with me. Madam. Gracious Olivia. What do you say, Cesario, good my lord? My lord would speak. My duty hushes me. If it be aught to the old tune, my lord, it is as fat and fulsome to mine ear as howling after music. Still so cruel. Still so constant, lord. What to do? Perverseness? You uncivil lady. To whose ingrate and unauspicious altars my soul, the faithfulest offerings have breathed out, but ere devotion tendered, what shall I do? Even what it please, my lord, it shall become him. Why should I not, had I the heart to do it? Kill what I love! But hear me this. Since you do not regard this cast, my fair, and that I partly know the instrument that screws me from my true place in your favor, live you the marble-breasted tyrant still. This your minion, whom I know you love, and whom by heaven I swear I tender dearly. Him will I tear out of that cruel eye where he sits crowned in his master's spite. Come, boy, with me. My thoughts are ripe in mischief. I'll sacrifice the lamb that I do love to spite a raven's heart within a dove. And I, for you, a thousand deaths would die. Where goes, Zoe? After him I love. <laughs> More by her own moors than e'er I shall love wife. If I do feign, he witnesses above, punish my life for tainting of my love. He detested. Oh, my beguiled. Who does beguile you? Who does do you wrong? Hast thou forgot thyself? Is it so long? Come away. Whither, my lord? Cesario, husband, stay. Husband? My husband. Can you that deny? Uh, husband, is it? No, my lord. Have I? Here, Lord Cesario, take thy fortunes up, for that thou knowest thou art, and then thou art as great as that thou feelest. Sembrica. What wilt thou be when time hath sowed a grizzle on thy case? Or what else thy craft so quickly grow that thine own trip shall be run overthrown? Farewell and take her, but direct thy feet without thy head's forth me. Never. My lord, I do protect! Oh, oh little faith, that thou hast too much fear. For the love of God, surgeon. What's the matter? Broke my head across. Even Sir Toby a bloody coxcomb, too. For the love of God, your help. I'd rather than forty pounds now I were at home. Who has done this, Sir Andrew? The Duke's gentleman, Cesario. We took him for a coward, but he's the very devil incarnate. My gentleman, Cesario? What's life that's here he is. He broke my head for nothing, and that that I did, I was set on to do it by Sir Toby. Why do you speak to me? I never hurt you. You drew your sword upon me without cause, but I bespake you fair and hurt you not. Well, for bloody coxcombe, I hurt you've hurt me. Oh, Sir Toby, you shall hear more. But if he'd not been in drink, he would have tickled you up against than he did. Ah, oh, now, gentlemen, how is it with you? One. Hurt me and there's an end on it. Sot. It's T. Dick, surgeon, sot. Oh, he's drunk, Sir Toby. An hour ago. His eyes were set at eight in the morning. Rogue. Hey, drunken rogue. I'll help you, Sir Toby, because we'll be dressed together. Will you help? There she is, and a cock's coming on my thin face. Go! Bam! Get into bed. Let this hurt you not too. I'm sorry, madam. I've hurt your kinsman. But had it been the brother of my blood, I must have done no less with wit, he said. 
Pardon me, sweet one. Even for the vows we made each other for a lady. Thanks. One voice, one habit. Two persons. Antonio. Oh, my dear Antonio. How have the hours racked and tortured me since I've lost thee? Sebastian. Feast thou that, Antonio. How have you made division of yourself? An apple cleft in two is not more twin than these two creatures. Which is Sebastian? I never had a brother. Nor can there be that deity in my nature, here and everywhere. I had a sister, whom the blind waves and surges have devoured. Of charity, what kin are you to me? What countryman? What name? What parentage? Of Messaline. Sebastian was my father. Such as Sebastian was my brother, too. So went he suited to his watery tomb. If spirits can assume both form and suit, you come to fright us. A spirit I am indeed. But I'm in that dimension grossly clad, which from the womb I did participate. Be a woman, as the rest goes even. I would my tears let fall upon your cheek and say, Thrice welcome, drowned Viola. My father had a mole upon his brow. But so had mine. And died that day when Viola from her birth had numbered thirteen years. For well, that record is lively in my soul. If nothing lets to make us happy both, but this, my masculine usurped attire, do not embrace me till each circumstance of place, time, fortune, to cohere and jump that I am Viola! The witch to confirm, I'll bring thee to a captain in the town where lie my maiden's weeds, by whose gentle help I was preserved to serve this noble count. All the occurrence of my fortune since has been between this lady and this lord. <sighs> so comes it, lady, you have been mistook. But nature to her bias drew in there. <laughs> you would have been contracted to a maid. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Nor are you therein by my life deceived. You are betrothed both to a maid. And man. Be not amazed. Right noble is his blood. If this be so, as if the glass seems true, I shall have share in this most happy rack. Boy, <laughs> thou hast said to me a thousand times I shouldst never love woman like to me. And all those sayings will I oversweer. And all those swearings keep us true in soul, as doth that orbed continent of the fire that severed day from night. Give me thy hand. And let me see thee in thy woman's weeds. <laughs> the captain that did bring me first on shore hath my maid's garments. He upon some action is endurance at Melville, you see, a gentleman and follower of my lady. You shall enlarge him. Fetch Melville or hither. And yet, alas, now I do remember me. They say, poor gentleman, is much distract. My lord, so please you, these things further thought on, to think me as well a sister as a wife. <clears throat> One day shall crown the alliance, so, not so please you, here at my house, and at my proper cost. Madam, I'm most apt to embrace your offer. Your master quits you. you shall from this time be your master's mistress. Sister. You are she. <laughs> Is this the madman? I, my lord. Madam, you have done me wrong. Notorious wrong. 
Have I, Malvolio? No. Lady, you have. Pray you peruse that letter. You must not now deny it is your hand. Write from it if you can, in hand or phrase, and say it is not your seal, not your invention. Then say none of this. For granted it. And tell me, in the modesty of honor, why you have given me such clear lights of favor. Bade me come smiling and cross-guarded to you, to put on yellow stockings and to frown upon Sir Toby in the light of people. And, acting this in an obedient hope, why have you suffered me to be imprisoned, kept in a dark house, visited by fools, and made to be the most notorious geck and gull that e'er invention played on? Tell me, why? Alas, Malvolio, this is not my writing. Poor fool. How have they baffled thee? Why? Some are born great. Some achieve greatness. And some have greatness thrown upon them. I was one, sir, in this interlude. It's all one. Do you remember? Madam, why laugh you at such a barren rascal and you smile, not he's gagged? And thus the whirly gig of time brings in his revenge. I'll be revenged on the whole pack of you! You most notoriously abused. Monsieur. And entreat him to a peace. Not told us of the captain. When that is known, the golden time convents, a solemn combination shall be made of our dear souls. Meantime, sweet sister, we will not part from hence. <laughs> Cesario, come, for so you shall be while you are a man. When in other habits you are seen. Orsino's mistress, his fancy is queen. Strive to 
leaves you every day.